Okay, so good morning, everyone. It's um, 8.36 a.m. for me, GMT plus one. I know you are ahead of me. I think you should be in afternoon by now, so almost afternoon. Welcome, everyone. It's Chukode, Machuku. And I'm here to talk about the instinct I So I'll be presenting my screen. Please let me know you see my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes. Okay. And um, there are some noise in the background. Please uh, uh, deal with me. I'm actually not within the house. I'm somehow way outside. I've increased the point of the screen. Please tell me if this is large enough. Is it enough? Susan, font la correct. Hello, please tell me if yeah. these characters are big enough for the screen. Uh, and and speak plus large and speak bit. Bon, bon. Hey. Uh, bon, hein, car font la font size. Ça, 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 Okay, so I I came up with this project. It's also on PyPy online as um, distinct ID, and the GitHub repository is where I'll be working from right now. GitHub.com slash PyTrick slash distinct ID. So I will explain the processes behind it, and uh, I have Docker images too for anybody that wants to work with it. And this instinct ID, the philosophy is one, it's pure Python. And then I relied on some articles, I provided a link, it does still available to be able to do it. Oftentimes, when we're writing code, we usually come to the point where a lot of people use base, um, sorry, a lot of people use numbers, um, characters that will give them distinct names or whatever, but oftentimes they are not sortable. An example is UUID. So I needed something that I could sort while coding, and at the same time, it's something I can easily give to someone, maybe something memorizable too. And that led to this. I will show you a bit. The code is not much on it. Okay. You can run the tests to see how it works, but then there is nothing much to the code except that there are just some mathematics underneath it. And the way it is, it works is in such a way that you can you can change it to taste if you want. So like I said, it's not much of a code base except some bit shifting here and there. And I'll talk a little bit about that philosophy. Uh, so years ago, Instagram started something. And in 2012, they documented it. And they had, it had to do with sharding and IDs at Instagram. But when they solved this problem, they solved it for Django and for PostgreSQL. But then I took it and I made it for Python. And to make it scalable, to make it beautiful, I added Docker with Redis generating distinct IDs. And with that ID, I'm sure there is not going to be collision even if you have 10 million apps running and expecting something from you. So the principle, like I said, you can read up more and it's an interesting thing. This was done in 2012. We're already in 2022 and that's 10 years. If uh, 2020, yes, uh, 12 years. I hope I'm right. Uh, Sorry, 2020 makes it um, 10 years and yeah, 12 years. If they had all these problems back then, you can imagine the scale of problem they have now. 
I'll give you an instance. If you go to um, if you go to Twitter, for instance, dot com, and just randomly, uh, let me can I remember a page? Uh, maybe let me say I'll use my own page. Let's say my own page, and I come up to the point where there is a post on something, and I click it. You will always notice this type of numbers. These numbers are the numbers we're talking about, and this is the number that they work with over there. So this number is this. Let's keep this. Let me go back and post. Click on another post. This is this number. Um, so this is this. If you look at this number, one five four nine is lesser than one five four four. Or you would see a pattern like fifteen, fifteen, fifteen in them, and the others are varying. And when we look at the, the tweets, this tweet came earlier on July nineteen. This came on August four. July nineteen, August four, lesser than this. And these are numbers that we use at the back end to sort and to refer to things. And that's what Distinct ID actually did here. It's a play with uh, the date module, trying to get the epoch time in a specific pattern, and then be able to extract a specific epoch here. So the way I did it, you will never have a collision any time you work it afresh. Either you started afresh or you are using it constantly, you won't have a condition. So this does what we call bit shifting. It shifts the bits to the left. On my terminal, I want to start with the virtual environment and I'll name that N. And once that is done, I'll activate the N and be able to work with it. But before that, I have an alias for doing pip install minus u, pip setup tools wheel. That's just what just updates my pip, my setup tools, and my wheel uh -huh. to avoid it asking questions. So that is done. Now, we want to do Python, and I'm in Python 3.10.6. If I have a number, if I have a number, that number is 10. This is what it appears in binary, but in Python, you will take it from uh, the two to the end so that you can slide off this part that they usually add. So this is what base 10 to base 2 gives you basically base 10, uh, base 10, a number in base 10, which is 10 is 10, 10 in base 2. These are bases. So when you do bit shifting, when you shift bit 10 and shift it once, you will have this number 20. If you do the binary of 20, you will, you will see this. What has happened here? This is binary of 10. This is binary of 20. You are shifting it to the left. You shifted it once. And when you shift it once, the number is originally 1010. When you push it to the left, it looks as if there is an invisible zero here. So when you push that to the left, we will now have this one taking up that invisible zero and everything moves and then it's zero to the end. And when you convert this in base 2 to base 10, you will get 20. So shifting something to the left is like saying 10 times 2. If I shift 9 to the left once, 18. Same thing as 18 times 2. And so 18 times 1. So when you shift something twice, when you shift it twice, it basically
3 becomes something like 9 times 4. And this 4 is 2 times 2. Showing that shifting to the left once is times 2, basically. So going back to this source code, you will see shifting 23 times. Shifted 23 times. And what that does is there is a 64 bit integer um, binary. 64 bit. If I take a binary of 2045, the year 2045, uh, year 2048, I basically come with this. If I have 2048, 2048, and I shift it once, I get 4096. If I do binary of 4096, look, an extra number increased here. Basically, this is not to 64 bits. If you count this, if you do length of this, so that's it's 13 bit. So if you do, if you have a 64 bit architecture like the system, and your number has only filled 13 bits, then that means you have 51 zeros you can shift in. That's the principle behind this. Shifting it 23 times, I'm trying to pick up 64 bits. Because 64 bit architecture means you have 64 binary digits, like um, I think 2 raised to the power uh, uh, 6 is 64. 2 raised to the power 6 is 64. So, like moving that amount of bits. So, having done that, next thing is those bits are shifted away. I feel the right part up with some bits shifted again. What this will achieve at the end of the day is you will have numbers that are serial, that are based on time, that are sortable, and that can't recall. There is no risk of collision with this. The reason is very simple, because it takes in a state. That state, you are at liberty to choose your state. It takes in a shared ID. And you are also at liberty to choose to do I can do pick install this thing ID and once that is done since I'm in my shell I I'm in my shell from this thing ID import this thing That is done. So it imports this variably, invariably. And once this is done, we can say, sorry. Once this is done, just as we are looking at, we can say, this thing, just give me a distinct ID 0, 0, as you like it. It will give you something there. There is a word wanted. So you begin to get this number. Or in another process, that one can start with 1. In another process, that one can be 1 with 1. And they will have no risk of collision because a lot of metrics ensures that things don't collide. But that they are sortable. The underscore in distinct uh, in range, let's say five. Print distinct zero. And for everything that comes in here, the underscore print it for me. And in that amount of time, this is what I have. You could see a pattern where 880 is less than 8,880 is less than 9904 is less than 40,000. It's less than so. It 
keeps filling up from here. Part of this thing I would help you to achieve. And for when, how you can use it, those places where you use UUID in your code base, this will be fine. And you should also learn to write application like this, guys. Oftentimes, people are writing code and you find a name slash maybe uh, one. This used to be the norm in the old days, something like this. Another new person, two, three. Nobody wants this. So because of that, people came up with um, UUID and the user. I think UUID, UUID uh, one something. Uh, sorry, UUID dot UUID one. And because of that, people come up with these things. And look at this for crying out loud. The length of this is 36. For those who may complain about the length, the length of this doesn't pass 18. And this is memorable, and this is sortable, and you can use it both as integer and as a string, as, as how you want it, anyhow you want it. If you use it as a string, for instance, I said this is less than this. It's true. If you use it as an integer, and I said this is less than this, it's true. So you can right now, where you are using UUID, just import this guy and replace it there. And everything will be fine, and everything will continue. The only difference will be that where you can sort before, you will now be able to sort. I have an application I'm maintaining presently. When on files are uploaded, it generates unique names, but it generates unique names with this. And sometimes I want to check, maybe physically, I know I can use some things, maybe ls dash lh. I know I can use something like this. Yes, interesting. Uh, dot, uh, on ENV. I know I can use all this, but somehow I just want to see it. Uh, if I'm on, the, on my GUI, I want to pick it and everything is sorted. Of course, I know that this is the latest one by just looking at it without running anything. This library will help to achieve it. And this is what I'm showing everyone today. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please keep it coming. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, we'll be. Let me see if anyone has a question. Any question? Uh, can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Okay, I think the presentation was clear enough, and uh, thank you very much. I've recorded it, and I'll upload it to our YouTube channel. So, thank you very much for coming, for presenting. Oh.